What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the Twin Sons Podcast, episode 52. Uh, I'm your host, Shane, and I am joined today by one of the coolest people in the galaxy. Is that big enough for you? Universe? Uh, I guess if it can work, if that's all we can afford for this week's podcast, episode. we'll go galaxy. Yeah, we'll go galaxy. Uh, the okay, saucy mailman, guys. Saucy mailman too. <laughs> What's going on, dude? How's it going? It's going good. I'm sorry, it's just me. You're stuck with me. Like I said, my co-host Josh is uh, busy being more important than I am, working for the government and such. Uh, but yeah, so you got me today. But I'm still very happy to have you here. I'm glad to be here. It's, it's, it feels like it's been a long time in the making. Our paths always cross all the time, but then like schedules never work and things are crazy. So uh, glad to be here. Yeah, it's going to yeah. be fun. Wait, we got your, we got your co-host from uh, Rune Terrible on before. We had, uh, we had the Blevins on and now we had to get yeah. the, the better beard, I guess. Is that what you call yourself? The... It is. I mean, if we're being honest, yeah. it is a better beard. <laughs> I mean, don't tell him I said that, but I mean, 100%, dude. I probably told it's just him the a, same thing. It's a fact. Oh, okay. It's a fact. <laughs> Uh, as always, guys, we're brought to you by uh, RunteraCCG.com. Uh, the site has been fire, keeping up to date. We're going to go through all, a bunch of spoilers because someone told me, I wasn't aware, but apparently a couple cards came out. So we're going to go through a couple cards um, on their site. But check them out. Uh, Agigas just dropped another article today. I reviewed uh, two champions, and I probably got all the cards wrong. So if you want to yell at me for my terrible opinions, like putting three sisters too low, you may do that. I've gotten plenty of it. So... Let me hear those thoughts. Uh, but for now, we just got to talk to Saucy about a little bit of his history and stuff. I need to know more about this, man. And then we'll jump into some spoilers and such. But Saucy, it seems like you've been gaming forever from what it looks like from the outside. Where where's, where did that start? Take me back. Oh, God. Uh, that So, like, my very first gaming, like, back back when I was a, a wee, a yes. wee hatchling. Um, no, I, I, like my, my, I started getting really into gaming from actually real time strategy games. So like command and conquer nice. Starcraft, Warcraft, those were like my original games. I was huge into RTS. Um, and then I started playing, uh, I got really into shooters funny enough. Cause I don't play any shooters anymore, <laughs> but I, I was a big call of duty guy. I, I was the dude that went to all the GameStop midnight releases, yes. uh, for all the CODs and hung out in lines and was that the smelly mountain dew, uh, xbox nerd playing call of duty <laughs> um but yeah yeah i've always loved strategy games uh and card games i played magic now for like 18 19 years nice um so magic magic was like my first card game i played pokemon tcg um and hearthstone and rune terra it's this it's this new game uh i don't know if you've <laughs> tried it but it's it's pretty I all right it. i haven't yet yeah try it out yeah no it's expensive it costs a lot to get into rune terra mm. um like thousands of dollars yeah. for your first deck but yeah. <laughs> if you can afford it then it's not bad it seems playable yeah at least yeah uh, you know sidetracking already instantly what's your uh what's your favorite rts game then favorite rts game yeah. uh Number probably one. red alert 2 like command okay. and conquer red alert 2 was uh my jam I really, really, really like StarCraft 2 a lot. Yeah, uh, very good. My first like competitive gaming foray when I thought I was going to be a pro gamer was StarCraft 2. Nice. I thought I was, I thought I was hot and like I was amazing. And then once I got into like Diamond Ladder and played against real players, I sucked. So Dude, I gave I mean, up. <laughs> Di Diamond's really high, actually. <laughs> so you yeah definitely didn't suck. it's hard dude starcraft's crazy it's tough yeah it's like i can't like my fingers i can't like oh, yeah. i physically don't have the micro speed to play the game <laughs> all, yeah yeah i was i was a huge fan of warcraft 3 uh there's a little bit less to do so i could keep up a little bit but you know never made it up into that diamond life like you did that's impressive um all right so we talked about blizzard here uh jumping yeah. over to riot Where, when did league come into the picture i feel like that's always a topic we bring up here but yeah, so I, I I streamed Hearthstone for a long, long time. Hearthstone was my jam. I nice. loved it. Um, and then, it, so it was BlizzCon 2019 I went to, and that's actually where I met Blevins, uh, my co-host oh, on nice. the other show I do. Uh, we met at BlizzCon, and uh, both of us played Hearthstone, but we were all both getting kind of sick of it. Like, we were in a... It was like a three or four month time frame where the meta hadn't changed literally at all. There was one deck that was playable, literally one deck. And uh, we were both sick of it. And we were both uh, getting into Runeterra. And he was just like, I do a lot of podcasts. Want to start a Runeterra podcast? So then, uh, yeah. So it was, I before that, I'd never played League uh, at all. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, I, I didn't know anything about Riot Games as a company. Um, and like, I, I'd never been huge into MOBAs. I played some Heroes of New Earth. Yeah. Uh, and I played original Dota, but that was kind of it. Um, 
And yeah, so then I, I learned about Riot Games. I've from this, uh, I started playing Team Fight Tactics after Runeterra, and I've played a few games of League. I have not played much. Yeah, I've played a total of maybe five games. I can count the number of champions I've played on one hand, uh, but I've never lost a game. So I'm undefeated. So. Undefe- yeah, retire now. I mean, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> might as well. No one's as good at me. So you, you know, I like that because so one thing I love to do is, and I'll ask you here too, is you know, what was your initial moment when you heard about Runeterra and a lot of people are just like oh well, I played League for 15 years or 10 yeah. years or whatever it's probably you know it's only been out for like 11 but still that's always their first <laughs> 20 <thing>. years of <laughs> League <laughs> Dota is the same thing uh so yeah what when did you first hear about it then if so I was plugged into just you know Riot 10 when that came out the big announcement and all that stuff so did you hear about it behind the scenes did you hear about it after the fact so I heard about it from a couple of uh, other Hearthstone people, okay. um, just just from colleagues and whatnot. They're like, hey, there's this new card game coming out. Um, you play card games. You should check it out. And at first, I was not interested. Okay. Um, I, was such a, I was such a Blizzard fanboy, like diehard. I was like, no, why would I play something that's not Hearthstone? Um, and I, I finally, I watched some of it, and I was like, oh, okay, actually, this might be pretty cool. So I actually uh, reached out to one of their community managers. and was like, hey, you know, I, I stream Hearthstone, blah, blah, blah. I want to get in on the first closed beta. Like, how do I do that? And they sent me a key. Nice. Um, and I remember my, I, I streamed the, the first night of the closed beta. Um, I had all of, like, five viewers because no one knew what the game was. And I yep. got <laughs> so hooked. I got so addicted. Um, I played one night and I, I, I remember vividly, I was done playing that and I, I was sitting there after stream and I was like, I don't think I can stream Hearthstone anymore. And <laughs> it, it, like it, it just grabbed me. Like I was yeah. addicted. And from then, like I, I became super into the game. I was like, I need to like, and it sucks because the first closed beta stopped and like, we had to wait like three or four months before the next one. I was like, I don't know what to do. Yeah. I can't stream Hearthstone anymore. I need more Runeterra. And I, I became just super addicted. Dude, that was a hard couple months. Honestly, I was mm-hmm. I was hooked from the get go. I mean, I I had played League, uh, didn't love it, but played plenty of it. Um, you know, I, I'm definitely not undefeated like Saucy. Definitely was mostly defeated actually, but <laughs> <laughs> it was you know it was fun while it lasted. But yeah, man, this game hooked me instantaneously. I had quit Hearthstone a little bit before then, but I love hearing that because I, I forget I asked somebody. I think it was Cesaro. Uh, Cesaro I always pronounce his name horrible when he was on. I'm not 100%, don't quote me, but I think he's the guy who saw it just from, like, an ad on Instagram, like, just saw Runeterra, and I'm like, dude, I wonder how that would have been if you weren't plugged into Hearthstone like you were, if you weren't plugged into Riot, and you just see an ad, and now you're addicted to the game. I love that story, too. It's fantastic. So that's yeah, pretty sweet. Yeah, They did, they, like, and it seemed like they were doing, because I, I remember a lot of people were just, like, didn't know about it unless they did play card games, but then they did a lot of, like, all of the, uh, like the Twitch Prime giveaways and whatnot when the game was finally released, but through the through the betas, a lot of people just didn't know about the game. I feel like. Yeah. No. Hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, I I heard multiple people also say like, yeah, well, you know, I heard it when it launched and they didn't know that the open betas were happening. And I was like, dude, those weekends, yeah, were the best weekends. Yeah, absolutely. The best. Uh, am I? We're losing you for a second, but that's okay. <laughs> Um, on discord it's we can always just blame discord i mean discord is literally <laughs> Am I, i'm here to say right what 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 what, 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 what remix <laughs> you can reset it if you need to it's totally fine we'll just you know we'll just sit here and chill for a second yeah, it always happens it's just you know it's fully discord discord always is like this well big head here i am The f- you're coming back you're here again buddy i'm shane okay <laughs> yeah for some reason when your picture's not up on like, the video I, it switches us yeah my internet's fine and it's just discord like i just did a speed test we're all sitting pretty yeah i'm, I'm hearing from chat i may have to change region on my discord server maybe uh wait, I'm, I'm east coast so maybe that's affecting it maybe that's a thing be... whatever uh welcome back me Hey there. Um, yeah, so we were pretty much done talking about Runeterra, so that's the podcast. Uh, no, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't even, never played it. We're almost through the the intro question, so we can start talking about spoilers. But I did want to ask, uh, you know, I see a lot of people still just getting into content creation. You know, that's partially me too, just about like a year ago we started the podcast, so it's relatively new for me as well. So I wanted to hear about, uh, I guess, the beginning. We can start with that. Let's start. When did you first start making content is the first question. 
So I've been making content now. Uh, I think we're going on five years. Um, I started, so when I started making content, it was actually for uh, Destiny. So I, I started streaming Destiny and I did it because I was playing a lot of Destiny nice. and uh, I wanted to record my games in PvP with my friends. And then I just like had a lot of fun. Um, and at the time I actually had such a piece of crap computer, I couldn't stream anything on a computer. So I was streaming through my, uh, my PlayStation. Um, so yeah, it was Destiny. <laughs> Destiny streaming is what got, what got me in. I'm just uh, getting then back it was into Destiny now, so it's kind of funny. Actually. Oh really? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I've heard good things. I've heard good things. Yeah, I played it for quite a while, but then uh, completely stopped, and then just jumped back in like a couple weeks ago. Yeah, digging it. It's pretty solid now. Pretty good. Dang it! Now I want to play Destiny again. Yeah. <laughs> Dang you, Shay! If, if you need a raid team, man, I'm I'm here for it. Oh, don't tell me these things. Don't tell me these things. Yeah, that was a good game to make content for, too. Still, a lot of the content creators for that are still popping off. Like, they're doing really well, man. Some of them are... I, I went back and I'm like, I recognize all these names from when I was playing four years ago. This is crazy. Yeah, it was fun. But yeah, I, I started with Destiny, then moved to Hearthstone uh, and did Hearthstone. Basically, that was that was all I did for a few years. And now nice. it's been Runeterra for the last year. So, uh, you know, I see a lot of people even in, you know, my Discord, your Discord, looking for, you know, just start content creation. Where do they start? Mm -hmm. What do they do? Do you have any early tips for people? You're way more qualified than I am, and I don't even know what to tell them. I'm like, oh, just start making something. So what are your tips <laughs> for these people? Um, the, so if you're just getting it, if you want to uh, get into content creation uh, because you're crazy for whatever reason, um, <laughs> honestly, my, my best advice, if you're looking to, like, do the, like, streaming and all that, Start with YouTube. Um, don't don't put basically anything into Twitch. Uh, Twitch is great. Like Twitch can be a thing that you work towards, but Twitch is not um, searchable in any way. And if you're streaming to anything under honestly like 50 viewers, it's going to be really hard for people to find you in basically any category. But YouTube is searchable. So if you're creating good YouTube content, yeah. um, start with that and get use that as a way to get people to your Twitch stream um, because Twitch is just a C there's uh, at any given moment, there's over 6 million other content creators and there's no way for anyone to find you. So, so Twitch is tough. Yeah, no, very, very well said. And you know, I, I was pretty terrified of starting YouTube content and I literally have no idea why. And we started so late because we were doing all audio. Audio was easy. You're hiding behind a camera, you know, just yeah. sitting there. But YouTube, I was always just like, oh, I don't know, I'm nervous, and even even streaming, I was fine with. But I definitely wish I had that advice because I feel like YouTube is 100% a way better starting place. It's a lot more comfortable. You can do it on your own schedule and yeah, get stuff out. So it's a, yeah, it's like my first few years of streaming, like I I didn't do any YouTube. I actually only created oh, wow. my YouTube channel right before Runeterra came out. Oh, okay. and like I my Twitch channel never got above like maybe 20 to 30 average viewers was like where I sat at. Um, my first few months of YouTube, it went to like 50 plus. And then after, you know, like six months of YouTube, I was over like a hundred plus. Nice. Um, so like YouTube, honestly, it's, it's, if you're serious about content creation, not even, doesn't even have to be YouTube. It could be TikTok, uh, Twitter, Instagram, whatever, just not Twitch. <laughs> like do something <laughs> where people can search for you to bring them to Twitch. If you're, if you're trying to be a Twitch streamer. Right. Exactly. That's great advice. I, you know, I'm, I'm glad I threw that question in here last minute. I thought I was like, you know, I, I it's something I need to ask. So I'll see myself. So hopefully, <laughs> someone else found it useful. <laughs> yeah. No. And if, if if anyone like, I help people all the time. Yeah. Honestly, if you are wanting to get into content, hit me up on Twitter, Discord, wherever. I'm literally always at my computer, so I'm always down to help anyone with whatever. Absolutely. Uh, okay, so we have cards coming out on uh, March third. So yeah. since there's a thousand cards to talk about, let's talk about the ones that have been revealed. <laughs> But, Let's do it. You know what? First off, just what is your number one? You know, if you if you only had three champion wild cards, who are you crafting first? Lysandra. Okay, I like it. You know, we'll start there then. All yep, right. it's it's Lysandra all day. This is the one. What is it? What is it about her? Well, okay. So I have a long history with this game. Uh, since the since the first open beta. The thing that every time I ever talk to any developer of this game, I always say, when can I make my Nexus tough? <laughs> and then she does it. When I saw that, my brain exploded. I lost my mind. Uh, <laughs> it's all I want. It's all I want. I'm I so happy. Because, uh, you know, I really didn't know where you're going to go with that because she literally does a thousand things. I mean, like, she's 
she makes probably the most powerful unit we've ever seen in in the yeah. watcher i was like all right so maybe he just wants to play this giant creepy thing with a bunch of arms but it's the nexus tough for you huh yeah that that's what i want i just want all these people that are trying to burn me out oh you want a mystic shot me <laughs> one damage nerd <laughs> i love it You're i always thought that was going to be uh uh what is it is it uh is it Galio? That's the that's like a statue. Yeah, yeah, he's made a petrosite or whatever. Yep. I always thought it was gonna be him that would be like you have to kill him before you could damage the Nexus or something like that. that I sense. thought he was gonna be the tuck Nexus guy, but yeah, so I'm, I'm happy with this. I'm not the biggest lore master, but uh, I've I've picked up a little bit from my other co-host. But uh, yeah, they are. Um, uh, apparently, he's made of petrosite, which is like anti magic stuff. So maybe he'll give your uh, your Nexus spell, spell shield. shield. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> bring it. All of the keywords. <laughs> When can I give my Nexus overwhelm? That is a great question. <laughs> we need hush for Nexus. Yeah, you're <laughs> about to all do these it. Nexus keywords. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm honestly, I, Lissandra was speaking to me in a totally different matter. And it's funny because she, you know, is so crazy, but it wasn't the watcher. It wasn't the tough. It was the almost like necromantic, like feel of just summoning a bunch of thralls. Cause I was super into like Diablo two and necromancer was my go-to. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, I want to summon just a horde of these frost guard thralls right here, and it just seems way too fun. Yeah, no, it's super sweet. The uh, um, the five drop. I don't ever remember his names, like Dr Drac, whatever. Uh, he's super oh, sick, making all guy. of these yeah, guys. Dude. Yeah, he's really strong. So what I've been saying about Lysander to people, because people are coming up with all these cute, crazy combos to get the Watcher out and whatnot. Yeah, right. It is not hard to make the Watcher cost zero right. at all. At all. Like, it's very easy in this sort of a deck. I, I mean, if you have it, uh, you've already, you're already halfway there, right? <laughs> you've yeah, already summoned you two. Two more dudes. <laughs> Uh, it doesn't seem that bad. No, I'm with you 100%. I think this Draclorn, I guess Draclorn Inquisitor is not only like one of the dopest looking dudes ever. I mean, he's like holding the craziest looking sword of all time. I'm, I'm absolutely obsessed with him. But yeah, his ability seems absolutely bonkers. Uh, just summoning a bunch of thralls. I literally can't wait for the thumbnail you put off on your YouTube channel with all these thralls because I know it's coming. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's going to be my first day is going to be 12 hours of Lysandra. Get ready. <laughs> Uh, I love it. Um, so I guess thoughts, I, you know, I just, I was like, she definitely does something else. Why can't I think about it? I forget. She literally makes a free ice shard every turn too. <laughs> yep. She does a lot for a three she drop, really, right? <laughs> I mean, we thought Aphilios did a lot and he does, and he does an absolute ton, but uh, is this the new thing or three drops just going to do this much now? Is that, is that the move? Yeah. And Intel Aphilios becomes an eight drop. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, thoughts on Entome? In tomb, however you want to say that word. Um, I think that the card is uh, better than people give it credit at first look. Um, it, it's very flexible. So, like, if you can, a lot of people are comparing it to the the cheaper the hourglass because it's two man, I think. Yeah, from right. Shurima. Yeah. Um, but that can't. Uh, this can target both friendly and enemy units, which is important. Very. Good. Um. It also makes an exact copy of the creature, or I keep saying creature because I'm from Magic, follower or champion. Um, so it, it keeps or maintains level progress if that's important. You can use it to fade things like vengeance and whatnot. Yeah, so right, exactly. I think it's good. It is expensive. I don't know if it's a card you would, um, you. I don't think you ever just put in Tomb as in like a main deck slot, but that's why we have three sisters. Yeah, I, I mean, so I, I was unfortunate enough to have to rate these cards, and I was like, this is tough. And I try to be, you know, slightly bold and try to not just be like, everything's a three out of a five. <laughs> so it doesn't just look like i um, trying to cop out. But I, I put Lissandra up there. I think she was 3.54. She's super solid. Uh, and Tome was a really tough one for me. I I, I don't know. It, it is. I feel like it's getting a lot of hate, and I don't think it deserves all the hate it's getting. I agree. I agree. What do you, how do you Oh, we're losing you again, Saucy. This is so stupid. I love that we can half hear you screaming. This is so funny. We need uh, we need F's in chat. That's what we need. He'll be back, guys. I'll keep talking until then, though. <laughs> Big head change. Discord's always busted. That's the thing, Night Striker. Discord is always, always. I feel busted. like I'm. You back now? I can hear you now. Yeah, you're. I can. I can yeah. hear you again. It's funny. We'll lose you visually and then audioly that's not a word and then you'll come back to us audioly and then <laughs> <It's visually>. so <laughs> stupid no audioly is a word no is, that is the word okay it's yeah. not audibly it's audioly 
I like it. Dude, it's listen, I, I when you went on your rampage against Comcast, I was with you a hundred percent. Someone's posting Comcast oh, in chat. Oh my I was god. With you. I'm in a new house. We only have Comcast. It's the only option we have. So I am with you on the yep. Comcast hate. I literally almost had to buy another house <laughs> to get to get internet because I didn't have any for it. It was like three months. It's so bad. It's so bad. It was, Comcast, man. Ooh, they they caused me they cost me my first Twitch partnership. By the way, did they? Oh my gosh! Yeah, that's why. I literally got like I got Twitch told me that like I, it was right when I applied for a partnership. Like, hey, all your numbers and everything good, but your stream schedule has been so inconsistent. Oh my god! Because I, I couldn't do it. They're like, we can't offer you partnership. I'm like, damn you, Comcast! I was so mad. That's absurd. I, uh, yeah, I, I went on a drinking bender. <laughs> in comcast's name yeah no i mean if we lose you you can just hop back in i'll just fill the airtime with some nonsense Sweet. i'll sing something or something uh what other cards in here i think i think blighted ravine is super interesting so i want to talk about that for a second yeah uh like a delayed avalanche that heals your nexus for i guess a net two if mm-hmm. it goes off but if it does get destroyed like they counter it then you peel four still it just feels good yeah, no, it, it, I really like the card. It's it's solid. If you have Lysander out, it only deals uh, mm. one to your Nexus. That's totally fine. That's smart. Um, but it's cool. I, it's like uh, my big thing, there's a lot of these Freljord cards we got that are seem like redundant versions of other cards we have. Like people are like, oh, it's just like, why not run Avalanche, blah, blah, blah. But I think having different uh, different ways to do the same thing, like redundancy, is very important in card games. Yeah. Uh, even if it's just for something like singleton format, like if you want more board wipes, um, just having more ways to do it is important. And this isn't a spell, uh, so if you are playing something that matters, you know, with landmarks, it's good. Um, but yeah, I, I, it does a lot of things you want in a control deck. I think the card's sweet. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, I put that pretty high. I, I was riding pretty high on Blighted Ravine. I think it's super solid. Um, cold resistance, I put pretty low. Uh, the uh, the off brand yeah. catalyst of Aeons, I put it pretty dang low. I'm not not feeling it. I had a couple people yeah. say they were feeling it. I'm I'm not feeling that one. It's I don't think it's great. Um, the only situations I could see you ever wanting to play this for any reason is one if you're insane enough to be playing Tarek and you want to <laughs> put it on Tarek to ramp more. Sure, you you did it. Um, but also in singleton, if you're trying to ramp, I think is basically it. That's Otherwise, yeah. play Catalyst. Yeah, rip singleton, dude. Yeah, I know. One day, I could see it. Like, I feel like at some point there'll be a high money singleton tournament or something oh, to try and. Great. Yeah, like, I think it'll happen because Riot keeps like putting out all these different, like, you know, singleton gauntlets and whatnot. They're trying to push it as a thing. Right. If they had like a, a $10,000 singleton tournament, how many people are going to be doing that? Right. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So it'll happen one day. Sign up I day it. one. Yeah, I definitely missed yeah. definitely missed that one. Uh, right, so I mean, I feel like on the surface, Lysandra is like sort of supposed to look like a little bit like a meme because she does so many different things. But like, I feel like she's actually going to be very competitively viable. What, what's your final take on Lysandra here before we move on to another set of cards? I think she's good. I'm excited for her just because I am uh, the blue player in Magic. I love control. Nice. Um, I don't think she's as scary as people think, but mm-hmm. I think she is definitely viable i think should take some work um but the 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 thing with control decks and runeterra is they're usually not as powerful as you would think compared to other card games because aggro is so strong in this game yeah Uh, so when people like rip aggro because there's all these control tools just think of how good (laughs) aggro is in this game to begin with yeah yeah i mean literally aggro i I remember when we were talking to yip at the beginning we just asked him like what was the number one thing that shocked you about you know the meta and he was just like championless aggro we had no sight on at all and i'm like that deck was bonkers for a while <laughs> yeah really good too we've had a couple good champion list decks because there was like yeah. that bilgewater undying one that was really good for a yeah, while too love me some undying all right so since yeah. you're talking about undying i mean i have Let's to do it we're gonna scroll up to kindred this is this is fresh off the mm. block today uh kindred seems amazing um i'm beyond excited about her i mean she seems like she's just sniping people from the back line uh as she's slaying things and all the shadow isles tech is Fantastic. Um, I think this is my number one. If I had to pick, ask myself the question, what would I craft on day one? I think it's three Kindred, but what are your thoughts on her? Kindred is sweet. She's really cool. Uh, I love mid-range champions, and she seems yeah. to do it really, really well. Uh, she's removal. She's got a good body. Quick attack is a good keyword. Yeah. Um, yeah, she's just, just good value. Not, like, impossibly hard to level, you know? No, no, not at all. Yeah. She takes some time, yeah. um, which is good. I don't think you want this to be, like, 
Uh, like champions that level up the turn you play them uh, historically make people upset, a la Twisted Fate um, yeah. <laughs> or Fizz. Uh, so yeah, I, I think she should take some work, but the payoff is great. She gets gigantic when she's leveled. Yeah, and it's pretty nuts. I mean, it just it, I, I, when I first read it just initially, I was like, oh, when she kills the person with the mark, she gets plus two, plus two, but she just gets the plus, plus, uh, that, the plus two, plus two just as soon as you slay anything. So even before that, her snipe goes off, she still gets it. So that's... Uh, yeah, she, she's going to get pretty gigantic. I think you're right. And then if she becomes unkillable, yeah, I mean, she's in Shadow Isles, a uh, region that pretty much does everything, but they do control extremely well. Mm-hmm. So they, Yeah, they definitely like to uh, kill their own stuff in Shadow Isles. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, Kindred provides more support for that. Uh, slay as a keyword is, I think, pretty cool. Uh, yeah, it's pretty sweet. So I wonder if uh, you know you have you have two of these out, two kindreds. Uh, can can she mark two different enemies, or did she just mark the same enemy twice? Because you know you can't stun the same like you know Leviathan wouldn't Swain wouldn't stun the same unit twice. So she put two marks out there so she can kill two different things. Because you know we have access to the Kindler and yeah other things. There's a lot of ways to do it, especially with all the like all the new cards we got like oh, the yeah. Hourglass and Entomb and all that. So. Yeah, exactly. We're going to be seeing multiple cha- copies of Champions a lot more, I think, after this expansion. So that's a great question because I actually don't know. I th- I I'm pretty sure. I don't know if it's changed, but I'm pretty sure it marks the same unit twice. Twice, yeah. But I can try and get confirmation on that actually. Yeah, I mean that uh, seems pretty important. I mean, like it really depends on if you want to build the deck to get two Kindreds out one way i mean if if she marks the same champion it's not as great but dude if she's sniping two people off the backboard that's pretty disgusting and i'm extremely excited for it uh there we got fading icon as well here uh literally one of the coolest art i've ever i don't know why i'm literally obsessed with this little dude he's he's so sick to me but he's just this fading little icon guy and he summons a prey with him so we just got extra bodies coming out you know it's shadow isles uh extra resources their bodies so you get to just eat this little spirit thing uh biggest question for you is the prey that's got to be the next guardian right oh i so hope so i hadn't even <laughs> thought about that yes i want that really bad because this thing is adorable it is, dude it is <laughs> it, it's like you you feel bad about killing it but then you're like no nah, glimpse is a good card though <laughs> yeah <laughs> glimpse is good and then you got this thing down here this spirit leech which is like a a unit glimpse <laughs> It's super solid here. You know, 4-1 on is a weird stat line, but it's a play effect that instantly happens. It's not a skill play shot, so you just get to instantly kill the prey, draw two cards. It's uh, Oh, there's a lot here. Uh, Saucy's breaking it out one more time. So. <laughs> oh, I'm so angry. <laughs> I absolutely love the screaming that comes through after. It's I'm absolutely so sorry. hilarious. I'm so sorry. You're fine. You're back already. That was like the quickest. Uh, we were just discussing the spirit leech and how how hideous he is compared to how uh beautiful the prey is that's where we're at yeah and it makes sense i mean it's a leech <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> it's nasty uh the... can we talk about can we talk about how the song of the isles is red why is that i don't know but it's cool like we're used to every every shadow isles spell is like blue and green and this one is red yeah i didn't even like put it together like when i looked at it i was like something's weird on that but i never literally like the box down here where the text is is red too it's so odd yeah that's all that's all i wanted to say (laughs) it's a great point i'm like blown away right now i like looked at it i'm like it's definitely something there but it it's so weird dude why is that i mean that card in general is also just very out there yeah it's i what do you think about this card because i've had a lot of uh very very mixed reactions uh to this card what do you think about it I, it's like burst speed lifesteal is pretty dang good i mean i'm just looking at it from that standpoint like all right just burst speed lifesteal trying to compare it to like spirits refuge which is burst speed lifesteal but you save your unit this is like burst speed lifesteal but you sacrifice your unit but it's in shadow isle so you don't really care about that that much I just don't know what deck it goes in. Like, it has value for sure. I just mm-hmm. can't think of where I'd want to play it. The fact that it gives Fearsome is so odd, too. Yeah, Burst Speed Fearsome is what I'm scared about. Yeah. Um, what What's this, this stupid card that makes Mist Race? Wraithcaller? Remember yeah. when that had Fearsome? How oh, stupid it was? Yep. So, like, that's what scares me. Fearsome is such a strong uh, keyword, and to give it Burst Speed, like, you can, you know, line up your attackers, give it Burst Speed, then commit, yeah. and that's like, that's scary. 
and there's a whole lot of fearsome tech coming out for sure with uh, yep. NASA's package. That's all, or Susan, whatever, whatever the name. I get yelled at every time I say NASA. So. It's both. It's <laughs> yeah. both. Yeah, no, that uh, I'm with you. That card's pretty wild. Uh, I think the unto dusk is pretty crazy the first thing my co-host josh said today was like wait so we can just make another weapon with aphilios and i was like that is not fun we, we want to come up with fun things we don't need more weapons stop giving people ideas with aphilios yep, dude, stop too much too much no i, I it, it, yeah that's a it's a good card even if it's just two mana draw one it's not the worst but yeah extra nightfall uh yeah i, I like it i feel like the like nightfall aggressive decks that aren't Aphelios could use some help. Yeah. So maybe this helps. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I think it could fit in a couple slots. I mean, it's really sweet to trigger your Doom Beast again or something. So like, mm -hmm. it, it looks like you can trigger an ally's effect if it had a targeting portion goes away. So you could like re-trigger uh, Nocturne, right? Everyone would still get minus one. You just want yeah. to give somebody vulnerable. So mm -hmm. there's that. I mean, if anyone even remembers Nocturne, he's a he's a Shadow Isles champion. <laughs> oh, is that coming out with this set? Is that a new yeah. one? Yeah, thrilled? it's a brand new card. <laughs> Yeah, he's coming in with the the next part of the expansion with this other champion, Katarina. I think is coming out with that. Oh one. yeah, yeah, I heard about her. Yeah, yeah, Ruben Zoo was talking about her. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> New card. <laughs> All right, so I know you have. Uh, this is like probably the worst segue I've ever done, but I know you have a parrot, and there's there's a bird on this card. This is yeah. a terrible segue, but I mean, I love it. Uh, we put it together. This thing looks nothing like a parrot at all. Close enough. Yeah, it's close enough. Uh, but I think it's actually really good. It's got like a built-in crumble. It seems good. Yeah, Ether Fiend. Um, yeah, I think it's uh, not not bad. It's a big. It's a six attack fearsome unit. Yeah. Wait, you know, with the there's the synergies there. You know, you you kill an undying. You kill something big. It can target champions. You know, it can't target landmarks like Crumble can, but it still has some value. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I think it's decent. I I don't think it's nearly. I think if I had to pick a winner from this lot here. If I can't pick Kindred, because I think it'd be Kindred. Yeah. I think she's busted. I think I'd probably go Mask Mother. I really like this card. The two drops. Yeah, two that's a cool card. Some. Yeah. So uh, I guess question for you then. This says, you know, grant its keywords. Um, we saw like in one of the videos it said uh, the, like the keyword, like shareable keywords. So like what Victor mm -hmm. can get positive. But this doesn't say that. So I'm assuming this can take negative keywords as well is my guess. I don't know if you have any confirmation on that or not. I don't think it does. That's so I don't think it grabs good. ephemeral. That is really good, right? I mean, you can play this on, like, Dark Water Scourge and get a 7-7 seven, seven with Lifesteal. Mm -hmm. That's really solid. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Ooh. it doesn't. Coastline Joe, it's confirmed no. And uh, I can't pronounce it. <laughs> Evis Rail. I guarantee you that was the, the incorrect pronunciation. That's yeah. good. That's yeah, very no, that's, good. It's a good, it's a good one. Yeah, that uh, that makes it my winner of the week there for sure. Do you have, do you have a winner in this batch, Saucy? In this batch, uh, my favorite card is Lamb's Respite or Lamb's Respite. Um, not because I think it's the strongest, but because I can put this on my kegs. Yes. Oh my gosh. So that that's all I care about. I, I think it's a cool card too. Um, being able to put this on ephemerals and stuff is pretty sweet because they don't yeah. die. Um, I just love that effect. I love the unyielding spirit effect. So I think that card is really sweet. Um, especially because, like, you put it on stuff, you, then you glimpse it, and you still draw the cards, and the thing doesn't die, and all that kind of cool stuff. Yeah, seriously. Man, that is, this card is definitely... Someone a lot smarter than me is going to make this card extremely powerful. That's yeah. what's going to happen. Same. Yeah. I always just wait for people to... Like, I'll come up with these stupid ideas, yes. but I never, like, refine the list. I'm like, here's what you do. Someone make this work, and then someone makes it work, and then I'm happy. You just pass it off. Yeah, It's perfect. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, these cards are uh, pretty sweet. I was pretty dang hyped yeah. about uh, Kindred in general. I'm, just naturally, I mean, we, we should probably talk about Sharima at some point, I guess, right? Nah. It, w th is that in the game? Sharima. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, talk about Susan! Uh, Susan's pretty awesome, man. I, I'm really excited. What's your initial take on Susan? Excitement? Uh, I like Susan. I think uh, the card is cool. I My favorite thing is the animation of the scarabs that go around their power oh when, when it's leveled up. So that good. is sweet. That is sweet. Dude, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really hyped. I know a few people were kind of like a little bit underwhelmed at Reveal, and it's tough. I mean, I get it. He's like, a, we, you know, we don't know how easy it's going to be to slay that many things, and you, mm -hmm. you think with Shadow Isles it gets easier, but is that forcing him there, blah, blah, blah. And he's only a 2-2, two -two, but, man, like he gains Spell Shield on level. I'm not even talking about level 3. Level 3 is great, but just level 2. 
gain spell shield and enemies just have a permanent stat of minus one i just love that they're adding some more fearsome tech to open up that yeah arch archetype a little bit it's like the permanent big frenzy skitter right. um works really well with atrocity because he has spell shield yeah jeez He's just a spell shielded they who endure. That's what I heard people calling it they who Susan. That's what that's what was going on. <laughs> so. I love that. <laughs> yeah, no, he's super legit. And like I do agree with you. I think Fearsome was a pretty nightmarish archetype, especially when freaking Wraithcaller had Fearsome as well. But I, I like this like later game Fearsome. Like we haven't really seen mm -hmm. that hit yet. And I think there's quite a few cards in this release. Especially this guy, dude. This Sanctum Conservator right here. The 8-5, uh, yeah. who just summons a second cop. I mean, his play effect is pretty nasty. It really is just going to come down to can you uh, actually slay 13 units or not? But I think yeah, I mean, if you have, like, if you've if that's happened, um, you press a pretty game-inning bomb, like, yeah. kill all their stuff and get, you know, big 2 eight eights. <laughs> Like, that's yeah. pretty good. Or 8-5, sorry. Yeah, with Fearsome, it's, uh, it, it's pretty good. I don't know. I mean, I do think it's pretty solid I, some people are thinking that's a meme uh do you like these uh these other units here before we talk about the spells what are your thoughts on this Bakai? i think the one drop is strong i think yeah. that the one drop fearsome one two that gets bigger is yeah. uh pretty good he's seriously good I, I really like him a lot the uh i i just you know he reminds me of like a, a bark beast in a way because you're gonna buff him pretty quickly after turn one just he has the the ceiling that's a lot higher but you know obviously can be removed by more but uh this other one's pretty interesting too he like has like a built-in single combat i mean mm -hmm. he's got slightly you know weird stats for an overwhelm unit but he's still pretty good yeah i mean and he's a five drop and you only need to slay four units for its effect like it's pretty easy for that to be on curve to give you the single combat uh, I think he's pretty solid. Yeah, no, I'm with you. Uh, and art direction, these are just like crazy. I, I was yeah. reading some of the lore for, and they're saying it's like people who failed to ascend and stuck in this weird state of something. And I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. Do you have any idea how to pronounce their tribe? Uh, that, what I, I what just, they are? I just say Bakai, like really weird every time. Yeah, I don't know how to, <laughs> I'm not sure how to say it. I've had like, I think I've gotten like six or seven different ways to pronounce it from people on YouTube telling me I said it wrong. So yeah. who knows? Yeah, if chat knows, if you guys know what uh, how to pronounce that, give me the phonetic spelling of Bakai. I just like say it all weird every time. Uh, there are some crazy looking spells in this in this batch too. Mm. Like really crazy. Uh, like Rite of Calling seems super legit to me. Yeah, uh, Rite of Calling. It's funny because so many people are... I keep seeing like this card seems so bad, but I know. zero mana to kill something that you already want to die and then also draw you your champion is pretty good. Right. And I think I think I saw you make the point in Discord is if, if you have ten mana crystals too, you don't you can just kill a mana crystal yeah. and who cares? Yeah, like if you top deck this late game, you're just top decking your champion if you need it. Yeah. Uh, and like it's another it's another tutor effect. So if you are building a deck around a specific tutor, you can like a specific champ, you can put it in there. Um, yeah, it's. I think the card is just really good, especially if you're yeah. playing like the uh, the Kindred's Prey card, the unit that makes the prey. Like you can just kill off the prey and yeah. draw your Kindred. <laughs> like it's sweet. Yeah. We've seen champion draw be uh, really good before, you know, with written in the stars. A few decks going around with that. So uh, yeah. All right, chat seems to say Bakai is is correct. Bakai, Bakugan, got it. That's it, got yeah, it. Bakugan. Uh, we, also, <laughs> we also got, like, the Ruinous Path, which is, like, the uh, the Doom Beast in sand form. Mm -hmm. We got the uh, draw a card. If you slay any units around, drain two from the enemy nexus. That's, it, I, I mean, I love the Doom Beast. I think he added such yeah. an extra reach. I, I don't know if this will see a whole lot of play, but it, draw a card is really good, and that effect is solid. Yeah, I think that like that's it's another um, kind of like I was saying with the like cata the the ramp cards in Freljord. Like it's if you want more heal effects, more drain effects, you can have that. But some decks like when we were placing a lot of like hex core Teemo decks that were running Doom Beast just for the heal. Yeah, like right. this is just better in that because you also just want to draw cards. So yeah, exactly. It's just kind of deck dependent, but I think it's all right. I think it's an okay card. I do too. Yeah, I, I feel like you know most of this we were talking about today actually. It's just I, a lot of playable stuff like a lot of this stuff is just pretty mm -hmm. good in multiple situations or just even one specific one but it seems pretty playable i think weighted judgment's probably my least favorite card from this batch i just i feel like it's super weird yeah i don't like it i think it's just very eh. yeah 
Uh, I'm, I'm not sure why anyone would play that. I, you know, I don't know what else Shurima comes with, so maybe they're that scarce for removal, but it just doesn't even feel like that's worth it. Just use your the vulnerable stuff ranked and came with at that yeah. point, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, we got Spitfire. This card kind of seems like something you want to put a keg on. Like, you want to use this with kegs. Is that my, The image I get when I see this card is that Saucy wants to keg somebody <laughs> with Spitfire. I mean, that'd be... That'd be pretty fun it's a it's a cool card like this works really well with your with fearsomes obviously because you're giving them less attack it's really? burst speed um and it hits everyone on the board so it's a really it's a strong combat trick it is expensive um but uh, like it is like the effect is quite powerful seven's a lot but you're i mean burst speed minus two across the board is pretty disgusting yeah i mean you can like even you could use it defensively or offensively um yeah, it, it, I think it's a it's one of those cards that takes some more uh, wrinkles in your brain to kind of figure out the best way to use it, but I think it can be a playable card. So out of these, like what we're looking at so far, what archetypes are standing out? Like obviously we see a good bit of fearsome support with Nasus and Kindred. I mean, obviously there's Shadow Isle stuff. Is anything else popping out to you? I think, so my favorite thing I think about Nasus is the huge flavor win with how well his uh, champion spell works with Renekton. Because, mm. you know, Renekton, if you target him with this, you're striking with things and potentially leveling up Renekton. And it's just like a flavor win because those two are brothers. That's like the, the best tale of brotherly love there is. That You're not wrong. You're not wrong. Even though they hate each other. <laughs> <laughs> In every cinematic, they're always just killing each other. Yeah. Excruciatingly. Yeah. Uh, the Siphoning Strike is pretty good. I, I think it's better than people were giving it credit for, too. I think I think most the, – the story of this reveal is I think it's a little bit better than people were giving it credit for. I think this was yeah. the one that got probably the most – side eye out of all of them yeah i have this i always have this theory when i'm in any card game when i'm looking at card reveals if there's something that looks like it's underwhelming at face value to give it more thought because it might either have to be like the stats may be low for a specific reason because the card's actually nuts and that's how i feel with nasus like looking at him at face value he seems much more underwhelming than every other champ we've seen yeah so that makes me wonder if he's actually much stronger than we think that's a great point. Yeah, th there's something that I think maybe I'm just kind of missing for a second. I, I mean, it's I'm not even trying to compare. Like we didn't even talk about his level three form. I mean, his level three form is pretty disgusting. He's gonna he's a ten ten base and he's still getting the buff, so he's gonna be absolutely massive. You can put overwhelm on him, but the static minus three is pretty good. I think people are comparing that to Renekton's form three or level three, who his attack and block ability is just like the one of the most absurd abilities they put in the game. Yeah. Um, but I, I mean, still like, you know, how often is, we don't, we have no idea how often level three champions are going to actually hit the board viably. Right. We don't know. Mm -hmm. Um, but without even looking at that, in, you know, at that point, they're both going to do their job when they get there. I still think he's good. I think he's solid. Uh, yeah, do you have, I like do you have a winner for this, for this one. I, I like this little game we're doing here. Winner, uh, for this reveal, I think my favorite card is probably the one drop, the, the Bakugan Reaper. I like it. Bakugan, yeah. Uh, backgammon. Backgammon Reaper is pretty good. Backgammon Reaper is strong. <laughs> uh, I'll go, I'll go uh, Sanctum Conservator because I see it getting hate, and then that fuels me to make it. One yeah. Of the so that's what I'm going. It's got to be strong. All right, we hit Lissandra. We hit Nasus. We hit Kindred. Mm -hmm. I think that's it. No, I'm kidding. We got a couple more. Uh, this one was a little spicy. Talia was, uh, was pretty interesting. I, I saw some people riding really high on her, thinking she's going to be super, super strong. What are your thoughts on her? Dahlia is really cool. Uh, she does a lot of super sweet stuff. Her effect is awesome. Um, it works in a lot of archetypes um, because landmarks are good. Uh, but I want to, I want to, you know how earlier I was saying, I always like to put out this idea of here's a thing that's possible, but I need someone else to make the deck for me because I don't want to do it. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've got, I've got to, let me position this for you. Let me pro propose this for you, friend. So there's this frail yard card. It's a landmark. Uh, no one's heard of it. No, it's never been played. But it, it is a seven mana Freljord uh, <laughs> landmark, the Howling Abyss. I heard it's good. And make two of them with Talia. I want that. Do it. My God. Just get. <laughs> I mean, you know, for the one time you get the bad champion, you also have a shot at getting the best champion at the same time. Exactly. So. Double ARAM, let's go. You know, I was literally thinking, I'm like, you know, where I didn't even ask you when when you said your your favorite was gonna be Lissandra. That's that's where you're going. Is I've seen a lot of people talking about this Talia with Lissandra. Is that the deck with Howling Abyss or where where else is that going? 
Um, a little bit everywhere, I'm sure, but I mean to start. So there's there's a lot with it. Um, I think there's going to be a couple like high level Lissandra decks. One's going to be with Shadow Isles just for your control uh, aspects, and because you can just run Lissandra with um, Trundle and just go into whatever region you want. Yeah. Um, I think with Shadow Isles is really good. Um, the the big problem with it is board space. Because yeah. you're making so many of these frozen tombs, you don't really want to duplicate those. But I do see going into Shurima for a couple cards, um, specifically the I think it's in this the two mana the Preservarium or whatever. I think that is a really good control card. Uh, I don't know if it was in this one or not. It, it might have Which been earlier. It, it's the two mana landmark where you draw a card. It has countdown two. Oh yeah, that was like this is by date. Yeah, uh, Preservarium. Yep, this one right yeah. here. Yeah, I think that is a very very strong control card. Um, yeah. It reminds me of the Magic the Gathering card. Think twice. So being able to get into some of these cards is good. Um, but I don't know. I think Talia doesn't work as good with it because board space is such a premium for all of these yeah. watchers you want to summon it is super interesting to, i really like uh yeah what are they uh rock bears those guys frozen right? thralls or whatever. oh though for lissandra's yeah 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 and now they have this other mechanic of rock bears in, in this one yeah so these other things you're waking up which is fantastic i mean i do like the the idea of like like a card like rolling sands that is yeah. solving its own board space issue by just destroying itself and doing its effect. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty cool. But yeah, the rock hopper is strong. The two mana three one that summons a yes. rolling sands or roiling sands. That's a strong card. Yes. Oh yeah, it's roiling. I didn't even know that. I just learned something right now. That is an eye. <laughs> the roiling sands. Yeah, I think rock hopper. Yeah, I'm not sure about unraveled earth for summoning two and drawing a card. It's not bad for burst speed. Uh, you know, three mana. But yeah, I think rock hopper. Rock hopper is super good. Just getting one of those mm -hmm. out for free, helping you get your conditions going. Do you think the the rock bears? I mean, all right. So realistically, without looking at the landmarks, I think the desert naturalist is amazing. Uh, the one yes. that destroys the ones. You have the tech yes. option of kill an opponent's landmark or an allied one and you get a uh, rock bear i think she's incredible outside of that what do you think about the rock bear package here they have the hybrid i think rock bear it is one. i think it's funny but not great i think it'll be a, like a fun deck to play but i don't see it being competitively viable yeah i kind of feel that. that's what i i think naturalist could be i think naturalist can be the flex yeah naturalist is great yeah that card is good. I spent, like I think the first two weeks of the expansion, there are going to be so many landmarks everywhere. So oh, you want to have landmark removal in all your decks. Yeah, yeah. We were just talking, uh, me and my co-host, and he was just saying, he's like, "Wow, we really like. Is, is this the only landmark removal card we saw so far? Like, this, we have not seen many, right?" Yeah, no, I, I don't think, think so. Of, I don't think we've seen that many at all. But yeah, I think she's super solid. Uh, obviously, people were kind of spazzing about Hourglass for sure. Yeah. Um, uh, it's good it's a combo player's dream for sure people want to do crazy stuff and summon you know 10 talias and on their board and yeah like that, so i mean that's i think that's where talia is going to really shine is in these uh super interesting fun combo decks yeah um i want to i'm going to be like playing her with timo and uh hex scores because i want to make more yes. hex scores why not love it, <laughs> love it. <laughs> i like how your mind is like how can i abuse timo more that's 100 percent. 100 percent uh, I think Shaped Stone was not getting enough talk when it first popped. I think this card's great. 3-1 for so 1. So strong. It's so good. I feel like yeah. we, we glossed over that in, in the uh, community. I think that's really good. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, one mana burst, give someone plus three attack, one health is pretty okay. Yeah, uh, it doesn't seem bad at all. Uh, anything else in this that we want to talk about? I, you know, we'll get we'll do the predict... Uh, talk as well but you know we'll talk about size scout in a second but any any winner i i think i'm with you i think i think rock hopper might be the winner of this batch yeah rock hopper is good uh hourglass is really awesome as well hourglass probably is realistically probably the right answer <laughs> i just like the yeah. rock hopper a lot <laughs> rock hopper is sweet and i like the thing that i forgot like when i first looked at it was this grants vulnerable it doesn't give so they yeah. keep it yeah and good you, you get rid of the roiling sands and you get your board space back i really like that mechanic really well, yeah. well thought out there uh, good. so we do have these predict cards here and we can add uh say scout as well but i will absolutely love the uh, flavor of like kahiri the student and kahiri the return uh -huh. the coming back i love it um so uh, you know a lot of people are talking about scry from magic how it's sort of like that it's got that same type of flavor what are your thoughts on that and also the thoughts of like you know i know you said you didn't play a ton of league but 
zillions literally in two of these things art and they they totally 180'd us and didn't get the zillion that was I, i'll be honest that's my favorite thing that's happened this reveal season <laughs> Um, because so many people are very like on their high horses, he knew exactly what's coming based on stuff. It's seeing all these posts of like people doing math and they like all this stuff, and then when it was when that was released, it made me so happy. Like, I was, I was so gay. Um, people are saying Comcast, yeah. no, just so you know, but I, I picked up most of that. It's starting to come. Uh, die? <laughs> it's dying a bit. I picked up most of it. That uh, you were very happy with the 180. <laughs> I love that Comcast just gets in the chat. It's so funny. I think you're back. What's crazy is my internet is completely fine. Like, I have one gig down and 100 megs up right now. It's just Discord so being Discord. It's, my internet's fine. You know, they did make a Discord's good point. Discord's a piece of crap. You know, we're, we're doing a direct call. I mean, if we could do it in a server. That, that might actually help if it's a uh, boosted server or whatever. That might be a thing, right? Uh, yeah, it might. Yeah. Discord just sucks. Discord sucks. Comcast Discord, we're coming for you. Um, yes, that so, was a uh, funny one. I'll, I'll, I'll do my rant. I'll do my rant again then. Yeah, one more time. Uh, I was super happy because everyone is super smart and they know exactly what's happening and they've they've mined all this information and <laughs> they they got the inside scoop. Zillion is coming out tomorrow, yep. and I'm like, are you so sure about that? Yes, it's happening. I'm like. All right, sounds good. And then it didn't, and I was so happy about that. It was actually fantastic. It was it was quite the thing, you know, and we were, like, trying to dig into the lore. We're like, is he from Shreem? I don't know Zillion's lore that well. And we're, like, looking it mm -hmm. up, and then they're like, oh, JK. Not Zillion. Yep. Tali is here. Uh, I really enjoy the uh, the predict mechanic. I think it's really cool. Like I said, the time-traveling mm -hmm. kid is really sweet coming back uh, yeah. as this beast who has Fearsome, too. Uh, even he has Fearsome in Shreem. Like, yeah, everything is Fearsome. It's great. Uh, how are you going to abuse the uh, Xenotype researchers? What are you going to do to break that deck? Uh, that is a good card. <laughs> that is. <definitely laughs> um, I like this with like uh, any any of the like it works well with the hourglass. Anything that has summon effects are really good because this is a summon not a play. Um, so yeah, it's it's just good. Any like this works well with Kindred spell too. <laughs> like, That's true. Really well. Yeah, really. Yeah, Chronicle um, of Ruin right in uh, right yeah. on curve with this. That's pretty good. I like. I think my favorite. Well, my favorite card from this batch is the Preservarium because this is uh, probably my second favorite card of the whole set. Oh, wow, uh, nice. I will be playing this in everything. I think it's very good. Uh, think Twice is just one of my favorite pet cards in Magic, and that's basically what this is. Um, and the Aspiring Chronomancer is just good. It's a two mana two three that has predict that's yeah. really good yeah no condition on it just plays and predicts it's really solid yeah yeah you know i i glanced over uh promising future the first time around because there wasn't a whole lot of countdown landmarks that were there but now mm -hmm. looking at the thralls that's actually pretty cool yeah i mean i don't know if it's it's probably overkill realistically with board space issues but it, it's pretty cool yeah no i mean it, it's it works well i mean it making if you want to play rock bears or whatever the, the grumpy bear dudes sure make more of them put it on preservarium and draw two cards let's go <laughs> <laughs> i'm in sign me up yeah no i think that card's actually uh pretty pretty okay. interesting yeah i don't know if it's the best uh i think so you're going preser uh pre that eh, preservarium I i'll yes. go with uh i'll go with aspiring Chron chronomancer i think that's pretty solid it's my winner so yeah, they're both good. good. Yeah, both solid. And we didn't even talk about Ancient Preparation. I think people were pretty hyped about that, too. It does a lot for one mana. Which one? Oh, the, uh, uh, the clock thing. Someone's a clockling and predicts. It's kind of shitty. It it's, feels It's slow, very mediocre. But It's very mediocre. See, that's, I think that's a moderately hot take. I think people are kind of excited, but if you don't hit it on one, then it feels awful, right? Yeah, it's... Oh, uh, like the thing is, it has countdown too. So you're waiting a couple extra turns to get a two two for the dude. Um, yeah, what's yeah, a two two it's... do on turn three? He still has some value, but if you play this on turn two or three, like if you're drawing it later, yeah, it loses. Yeah, its value. <clears throat> like in the decks, like uh, it just, yeah, yeah. Drago. That's all I can say. That's all I can say. All I can say. Predict. So we. He likes predict. You know, it, it's not a free predict though, because map, you're yeah. taking and a like space. the thing is, <laughs> it what's that was, but it's also deck space. Like you have to put this in your deck, so that's a card slot in your deck. Um, 
yeah, it's all I can say is it's not great. That's all I'll say. <laughs> it's so t- it's like, you know, I've been going through and I've been reading these cards and stuff. It's just it is really tough thinking about, you know, we're adding all these cards, but our decks are still only 40 card slots. So the card yep. slot argument's super valid. And it, the decks are just going to get tighter and tighter for what they can actually put in. I mean, it's definitely going to be tough to fit everything we want to fit in. Uh, we got Jarvin here. Jarvin's uh, nuts. I know th- we're getting back a little. I mean, this was February 20th. So this was five days ago, but yeah, we haven't recorded in a couple of days. So we're going to uh, <coughs> even talk about Jarvin here. Uh, first thoughts was Jarvin's nuts. Is that what I heard? Yeah, Jarvin's going to be all over. Be ready for the the ladder to be so many Jarvin decks. It's He's so strong. He's so strong. Dang, he's good. Yeah, I mean, he is. He's pretty absurd. the The action of him just coming out as you swing as like an open attack is just so valuable with barrier yep. with challenger. He's he's nuts, and I like adore his his champion spell. I think Cataclysm is super fun. Cataclysm is very good. Um, the interaction with this on scout units is crazy. Also nuts because you like if you use this on like the moose scout whatever their name is uh you get another attack phase after the scout attacks that's yep. stupid <laughs> it's really good that's it's it's absolutely wild i think this card's really incredible i think it will definitely compete for some uh slots uh, like with pursuit if you're running scouts definitely you, you want to run this for sure i think mm-hmm. it's super solid battlefield prowess is uh the boring card but it's uh, i mean plus one plus one it's fine but super super yeah yeah, very tame it's so funny because it's like i feel like when you look at like a magic release or hearston release there's so many of these and this is like the third time only that we've been like oh yeah this card's okay (laughs) yeah that's that's like that's a good point like even the cards that we're saying aren't amazing are still somewhat playable like i i think almost everything has been playable in some fashion or in some deck and this is like one of the most boring cards it's like "Eh, slow speed one one do you really want to put this in your deck yeah, it's just does it really feel like it deserves a slot now that there's all these new cards in too? It's it's I I doubt it. Uh, they yeah. they got another Squire one drop two two. I mean, Demacia is just bringing the mm-hmm. stats. I mean, and it has an effect. Yeah, cards good. Cards really good. Yep, burst speed challenger. Uh, pretty good, yeah. and it's Grant probably, too. Yeah, it probably takes the place of Sithria in most decks because people don't care too much about elites in most decks, obviously. Right. But if you want a one mana two two, sick. Here it is. Yep. Gives you that. That's pretty cool. I mean, there is, you know, uh, obviously Jarvin's elite. That's the only card that's not elite. We got more elite love here. Uh, yeah. It, and it's all pretty solid, honestly. Like, I, the the Honored Lord's pretty solid. Uh, I yeah. think he's pretty good. I think you might be doing the uh, the breakup thing, but I'll, I'll, I'll fill this space right now. <laughs> uh, yeah, Honored Lord to me, solid. First time I challenge an enemy, give me better this round. Seems good. I mean, it's... They just really solid three two. I mean, it's, it's kind of like a bright steel protector and a uh, a which we call the fleet feather like built into one unit here. It's just super interesting. I don't know. I'm about it. Plus, this guy's got a beard, yep. so you have to like him, right? Oh yeah. If it, if a card has a beard, it's automatically plus two uh, to its its score. So absolutely. <laughs> uh, looks like King Jarvin's got a beard. It's not as long, but it, that is a beard. Um, I'm really happy to see this. It reminded me a lot of the uh, the boats we got from Rising Tides that every champion had like a search engine, a tutor card. So yeah. I'm happy uh, Jarvan Third can call out his, his son and draw him. But that effect is wild, right? It's real good. And yeah, Jarvan the Third is a boat. We can confirm that what what is Jarvan's dad is a boat, which is good. It's which does that make Jarvan a boat himself? I don't uh, know, Jarvan the Fourth. Yeah, that uh, through the transitive property, I think he is in fact a boat. <laughs> yep. So that's cool. That's good. But yeah, this effect is pretty good. I mean, giving uh, a Garen scout seems okay. Yeah, seems decent. Not the worst. And challenger seems decent. Yeah, I mean, obviously yeah. weak stats like all the like a lot of the boats have. But I mean, this thing is uh, he's that's disgusting. I mean, he's a good boat. Yeah, he's super and- solid. And it's a it's a summon effect on this. Like a lot of the boats are not summon effects. That's true. Uh, this one is. So if you are, you know, p- playing your Vaults of Helia deck, that's popular. You can kill something and bring this out. So there you go. A uh, super interesting because the thing you would kill would be Jarvin, right? If that's the six drop. Yeah, kill Jarvin to get his dad. <laughs> and then you just draw Jarvin again. <laughs> Perfect. That's actually hilarious. I didn't even didn't even think of that. That's fantastic. Uh, I love the the gallant rider. I think this is super sweet. 
uh yeah she just comes out early but transforms into a five five with tough it's just so funny it's just such an interesting design card i don't know i don't know if it's yeah good. it's really cool it's cool it's really cool i i mean if you're if you're in the elite package if that's what you're doing right if you're running for the fallen and you're going hard in the elite package you're probably playing a lot of these cards yeah absolutely I mean, like it's not a good. bad card yeah uh and then they added another i'm sorry technically cataclysm isn't a rally effect but like saucy said with scout that interaction is pretty ridiculous and it is a rally effect in that case yep. but they added an additional one too they got golden agus which is given alley barrier this round and rally uh it's kind of weird that it's just gonna like directly compete with pursuit right yeah i mean it's it's uh it's not bad um giving barrier and also rallying this seems like something that uh fiora would like <laughs> yeah now she might all right what's your winner here we got one more set to go through. So, guys, if you do have questions, by the way, in chat, we'll uh, we'll ask some questions at the end to Saucy so um, Rise. Probably Cataclysm. I think Cataclysm is the winner. I'll go with the boat for the popularity of boats. I'll go King Jarvan. Love it. Keem boat. Uh, so, we've got Rennington. That's the last one here. We'll go through this one. And, uh, I mean, he seems crazy spicy. I think he's awesome. Uh, I love, absolutely love the mechanic of... Him just growing, smacking things. He seems like a Shivana, but he does it a little bit more consistently, it appears. Uh, thoughts, initial thoughts on Renekton? Yeah, Renekton is uh, good. <laughs> he's, a, he's awesome. <laughs> Once he's leveled up, he's so good. Uh, I mean, when he's attacking, he's an 8-8 eight, eight with crazy. Overwhelm. Uh, if you give him any... <laughs> yeah, exactly. You give him any keywords, and like we, with all of his stuff, um, giving everything vulnerable and minus attack, like he is just strong <laughs> he's a strong dude i'm with you i i think i in in moderate love with the access to vulnerable here like i love that about bilgewater i love the give you know higher gun give people vulnerable stuff like that i love exhaust uh i love that focus is now a speed we have a new spell yeah. speed yep and they didn't call it gym speed which we've all been calling it anyways Forever, <laughs> yep. gems came first <laughs> yeah i think yeah that no it's, it's great. good and so is uh, his his spell too, his champion spell, giving ally plus two plus zero and enemy uh, vulnerable zone. Both playable, solid. Yeah, no, I mean they they're both similar, but the predator has burst, whereas the exhaust is focus. So just remember that. Um, yeah. But yeah, he's he's awesome. Um, I've been calling him Croco Dunkle, so that's his nickname now. <laughs> that's his official nickname Fantastic. because Nasus. I mean, Nasus is Doggo Dad. Yes. And so if this is his brother, that makes him Croco Dunkle. Oh, that, that there adds you go. up. I like how he's choke slamming Nasus in the third one, too. In- yeah, you know, they're just hanging out as good, as they're good playing. brothers do. Yeah it's, a- <laughs> yeah, it's a play fight. They don't want to kill each other. <laughs> All right, a little bit more of a serious topic here. Uh, people were worried about the bloodthirsty Marauder power creeping the Legion rear guard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean that's just true. That one I can just say is true. <laughs> he did. He did power creep it. I mean, at least they power creeped a bad card. So it's not that yeah. big of a deal. Um, but yeah, he, he got power creep. But it's in a different region. We'll see how it works out. Um, yeah, exactly. This isn't like I think like you people don't take region into account when they're evaluating things. Yeah, Noxus is a pretty damn aggressive region. Yeah. this one doesn't seem as aggressive uh, on on the face. That's all. That's all we can say. Yeah, yeah. They don't seem like uh, they seem like they have half the amount of burn, right? I mean, they're not they're not coming out just like smacking the nexus with a ton of different abilities or every unit has. They just seem like they do it a little differently, which is uh, which is good. So this unit might yeah. might be fine. Like, think of how good, like, the Green Glade duo would be if it was a Noxus card. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> like, things like that. Exactly. Huge difference. Uh, what are your thoughts on this mechanic of, so we saw earlier the card that can kill a unit or kill a uh, mana gem. Thoughts on this whole mechanic here? So unworthy killing, if you have fewer mana gems, you get to uh, just kill a unit for two mana slow speed. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, I think the card is interesting. Um, I don't know if it's going to be, like, Setting setting back mana tempo is a pretty steep price to play so pay for something so I don't think that that makes it um, worthwhile. Uh, that's my my first thought. Like that's yeah. I mean at best it's a two mana kill something, but you can't. You would have to like play the rights card on 
turn one and set yourself back for the whole game to play this on curve. So I think it seems like garbage, but that's that's me. I don't think it's that good. I, I feel and like it's slow. It's yeah, slow kills it. It's from what we're looking at now, unless there's like another big incentive coming out in this you know expansion or even in the next mini expansion or whatever, if there's another big incentive to actually sacrifice your mana gems then maybe, but right now I think it's, I'm with you, I'm with you. 100%. They have to have Fiora's effect on this. <laughs> if you have fewer mana crystals, win the game. Win the Easy. Game. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I'll put nah, I think it's in, not yeah. that good. I think it's not that good. Yeah, I, right now there's just no, you're not going to see ramp enough consistently to put this in like a ladder deck and you yeah. know, to be behind that way. And there's not enough reasons to kill your own mana gems to do that. I like it. I think it's cool. Yeah. I just don't think uh, there's a reason to play it right now. Uh, I could see. I think this is one of those mechanics that right now is is poopy. But maybe like a year down the road, if there's yeah. if we have a bunch of units that like it's a three man, it's like a way over costed unit. But you have like it's a three mana three three. But if you have less mana, it's like a three mana five five or something. Or it gains elusive stuff like that. If it becomes a thing, I could see it being good. But right now, I think is big old poop. I'm with you. I'm with you. I, I think it's almost. One of the worst cards that we've seen in this in this yeah. release, uh, for sure. Uh, Quicksand's pretty good, though. Yes, Quicksand's good. Every region's got to have their three costs. So they, you know, just do something powerful. Flash Freeze, Hush, we got Quicksand now. So this one's pretty good. Yep, I think this is a, I think the card is good, and this is going to be one that pisses off players a lot. Mm -hmm. um, people don't like their units uh, getting screwed with. This is removing keywords. Uh, it's going to blow a lot of people out in combat, and I think it's a very good card. Yeah, and it's uh, it's one of the ones that we were talking about. How it says excluding any negative keywords here in, yep. on this card. So there's that different difference there that they're putting uh, just so you know they don't lose like ephemeral or anything. They would still die at the end of the turn. Uh, what were we calling this? Backgammon. We got the backgammon. Uh, yeah, backgammon sand spinner. Sand spinner. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's spinning sand. He is spinning sand. He's got. Uh, six arms, a little Zenyatta action over here. Uh, yeah, he, I thought that's the thing. Like when I first saw this, I was like Zenyatta card. <laughs> If only he had to do something with like you know, healing or anything or support. Yeah. But instead, he's got the uh, play grant an enemy minus one minus zero and uh, grant them vulnerable. I think you're uh, lagging out. Just FYI. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think he's uh, actually solid. I mean, it's an instant play effect. It's not like the hired gun where you have to actually hit the right target based around you know being the strongest or weakest or anything like that. You just get to pick who's vulnerable. Get minus one attacks, you can trade. And it, both of those are Grant, so it's a permanent stat deduction. I don't know. What are your thoughts on him? I think it is... Um, I think the card itself is strong in the right deck. Um, I, it's not one you probably would put in every deck, but if you are playing Renekton, I think it's pretty decent. Yeah. I agree. You know, we haven't talked about Expedition, so I'll throw that topic in here. This card's great for, like, a draft yeah. card like that. Yeah, excellent in Expedition. Excellent. Yeah, man, that's good. All like the higher gun and all their vulnerable stuff was so good in Expedition. It's great. Yeah, and it's it's like it is a decent like I think the card on its own is good, but I think the biggest thing is thinking about it taking a spot in your deck. Um, I don't know if it merits a spot itself if you want to play like how many of these grant of vulnerable effects are too many in a deck? Like, are good you point. playing this? and the Royal Sand guy, and all these spells with Renekton. And, like, is every card in your deck giving vulnerable? It's probably too much, and this may be one that may not make the cut. Yeah, that's a great point. Great point. There is, I mean, they hit us with quite a few, right? Not Like you said, I forgot about Roiling Sands already, but we have Exhaust, we have Relentless Predator. Predator, we got this. Right of Dominance, I think, does it too. Uh, yeah, what is this? Kill an ally or sure one of your mana gems to give all enemies out. Minus two oh, yeah. Surround, yeah. But that's enough, actually... Yeah. You know, interesting and fearsome too. Uh, and yeah. the last card here is this. Uh, I mean, is is she riding two crocodiles at once? Is that what? I'm yeah, thinking? I think so. I think so. <laughs> That's probably the most badass thing I've seen ever. I mean, what is going on? It's like a double mounted crocodile. Uh, yeah, it's six six attack. Give it. It gives me the. Uh, what was that guy who never saw any play that I was super hyped about? Uh, Arak was yes. it? Arak. That's it. Glint Glintthorn or something. Glinthorn. Yeah, something like that. Yes. Yeah, he saw it, it gives me that vibe. It's like, all right, this looks amazing. And then like in reality it's not. But this one seems pretty good. I mean it's got the keyword built into it. It's got fearsome built in and it helps mm -hmm. all your other fearsome. So I don't know. I, I think it's better than our rock, so Yeah, I think it's it's better. Um if it was a Minotaur riding on two crocodiles, it would just be strictly <laughs> better in all ways. But since it's not a Minotaur, we gotta give it some demerits for that. Yeah, minus one kudo point for that, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. 
I, I just can't believe I, I need I didn't look up this one I need to see the full art for this one this just seems like yeah. the most ridiculous thing I've seen my god we made uh you know one, one more thing here one more thing uh winner or loser in this in this batch here uh quicksand winner quicksand yeah yeah I think that if, if we can't pick Rennington I think it's quicksand I'll quicksand go is good. I'll go exhaust for giggles uh, it's three crocodiles all right scroll back down what, what? it's what is it three? One? It, oh, is, uh, in the, it might be in the full art. It might be three crocodiles. Oh my the, god! If they're writing three crocodiles, this is meta. He, that Sinbad saying full art is three crocodiles. That is the most absurd. Like what? It's meta. It has to be. Wait, hold on. Crocs. Wait, hold on. See full art. Oh my god! It, there's three crocodiles. This card is meta. Holy crap! And it's sitting on top of something it killed. Yeah, this is the best card in the set. It's the best card in the set. Uh, hands down. Day one crap. <laughs> we changed our answer. The winner for all of this entire episode is yeah. this right here. How do you beat someone riding three crocodiles? Absolutely absurd. I love it. Uh, you know, we've been we've been talking to chat all day. If they have any other questions, feel free to jump them over. I'll, I'll put us back into to this mode so we're larger. Uh <laughs> Someone just suggested writing four crocodiles was the answer to how to beat three. Ooh, ooh, that's true, though. That's true. We haven't seen someone that powerful in the world of Runeterra. So I don't know if there is anybody that I don't I I can't imagine off the top of my head if anybody is that powerful. Um, Right. That's a lot. That is a lot. Uh, We're going to end the episode here. Saucy, I am like so happy we got to talk. I'm so, so very appreciative of you coming on. Thank you so much. Dude, yeah. Thanks for having me. Like, uh, had a blast. I'm, I'm always down to come on anytime you... Uh, your co-hosts are out, you know, gallivanting across the world, and you need someone. <laughs> yeah, no, I appreciate it. We we, de- we definitely need people. We are always uh, always losing always losing friends to jobs and to other things. So <sighs> it hurts. Yeah, I know. Imagine life having is like a job. the worst, dude. Like the worst. No, I really appreciate it, guys. Uh, if you haven't checked out Saucy, which if you're listening, you, know, you you better have checked out Saucy already. But if you have not. I will have all of his links. Uh, I mean, you got Twitch, Twitter, YouTube. Anything else you want to throw in there, too? Yeah, at least those three. Uh, yeah, if you ever want to follow me anywhere, my website is just saucy.live, and all my stuff is there. Boom. Easy enough right there. Uh, I will throw all those links in the description of this podcast. If you're listening, if you're watching the video, it will be in the description of that video as well. Saucy, I really, really appreciate it. Thank you again so much, buddy. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, dude. Yeah. Everyone have fun in uh, Runeterra on March 3rd. Have a blast. Shereem is coming. Peace.